So with that introduction, and now that we've got our soil sample ground up pretty fine, or at least we've got most of the aggregates out of it, uh, you need to use a soil sample that is air dried or, or even oven dried because we need to get this soil at some kind of a consistent moisture content. And this soil is definitely feels dry to the touch. So we're going to take and measure out. Now, in, in sorting this through my hand, what I'm realizing here now is that there are some very small pieces of gravel in here. And it's really not fair to leave those in, in that particular soil sample because that would give us an overestimation for the percentage of sand since this would obviously settle very quickly. So when I come across these types of aggregates, I'm going to remove those because if there were enough of them there, say 20% or more of this soil's mineral matter were, were aggregates in, in excess of 2 millimeters in effective diameter, then we would uh, imply a specially textural classification to this soil such as gravelly. So it may be a silt loam soil, but gravelly would be implied based upon the presence of, of those aggregates. But as I feel through this sample, I find a few of them in there, but not very many. Certainly not anything that would approximate 20% uh, or more of the weight of this particular soil. I'm just going to take these out to be, be careful and not to include those in the 50 gram sample that I am doing the actual textural class analysis on. As I get ready to weigh out this 50 gram sample of soil, I'm using an electronic digital scale here, but any type of scale, even a simple triple beam balancer or gram scale would work. You notice we're working in grams today, the, the uh, metric system. That's very standard for uh, soils lab and other agricultural types of labs to work in grams and, and other units in the metric system. Now, when I place this dish on here, obviously I want 50 grams of soil. This particular dish, or the scale now tells me this dish weighs approximately a little over 2.3 grams. Uh, I could then go up to 52.3 grams to get my 50 grams, but on many of these scales, we simply have a tear button which we can push. It'll re-zero the scale, and thereby uh, we can weigh out just exactly the quantity we need, 50 grams, with the weight of the container or weighing dish already being taken into consideration. So rather than bring the soil over to this and, and, and be placing soil or dumping soil on the scale and having a chance of spilling, I'm going to go ahead and remove the dish, uh, put in what I believe would be approximately 50 grams. If you run into large pieces of organic material, you also want to take those out. They're going to float to the top of your uh, sample when you run this, the uh, suspension and sedimentation test. It really won't interfere too much, but if you can see in your lab handout, it's talking about digesting the organic material out of the soil prior to the time you do texture. Well, in these soil samples, which are fairly low in organic material, such as this one, that's not an absolutely essential or critical step. However, if we were working with a soil which was high in organic matter, say up in the 5 6% or, or above range, then we would need to use some sort of a digesting agent to remove the organic material so that it didn't throw off our, our results or analysis. And this is simply root matter that was found down in the profile from where this uh, soil sample was taken. See that we only have about 33 or 4 grams, so I'm going to take it off and continue to add soil to it. Now I've exceeded the 50 grams that I want. Still just slightly too much. Remember, I've already teared the dish, so that's been, the weight of the dish has been taken into consideration already. It behooves us to weigh this out as accurately as possible because all of our calculations are going to be based upon this 50 gram total weight of the soil sample. Okay, we're now within one tenth of a gram or less. Uh, we could try to become a little more accurate, but there's enough variability in the system that this is very, very close. 
there's even more accuracy. So we're going to call this a 50 gram soil sample. So once I weighed my soil sample, then the next step is to basically take this sample and to put it in the dispersing cup and mix it for approximately four minutes on the, on the mixer along with adding the dispersing agent to help these soil particles not want to cling together but to separate from each other uh, so that we can get a true estimate of the, or, or true measurement of the amount of sand versus silt and clay sized particles in the soil.